what you eat and what you put into your body has a huge impact on your health. When it comes specifically to your gut health, probiotics and fiber become a big part of keeping everything moving the way that it should. Here to talk about that today is Dr. Rahini Vanga with Alamance Gastroenterology. All right, we're gonna start uh, when we talk about gut health. What exactly are we referring to when we talk about gut health? Hi, Tanya. So uh, good evening, everyone. So gut health is basically, you know, you have a digestive system that is well functioning. It's like a well oiled machine that we need in order to uh, manufacture a quality product and don't underestimate the digestive system like heart, lungs, and kidneys, which are vital organs. The digestive system is also very important. So when it comes to gut health, in simple terms, it's about the balanced and diverse um, gut microbiome, which is a home for billions of bacteria. And it's mostly, you know, bifidobacterium and uh, that's the common species that we see is bacteroides and it's a balance between the good and bad bacteria. So that's the main uh, gut health comprises of. I love though that you mentioned that we are talking about gut health, but that it impacts all of the organs in the body. So it is important that we pay attention to this. What causes poor gut health? Is it just what you eat? So there are a lot of things that are very important to maintain healthy gut. Uh, you know, most of all is what we eat, you know, a well-balanced uh, diet which contains fruits, vegetables, rich in fiber, legumes, uh, whole grains, and also uh, fermented uh, dairy products like yogurt, uh, you know, kefir, um, and uh, for example, even uh, kombucha. So those are all very important to maintain healthy gut. You know, there are other things that are also play a very important role and they can lead to poor, uh, you know, gut health is uh, like stress, you know, not having enough sleep and, uh, you know, not having adequate physical activity. And if you're taking unnecessary antibiotics or any other unnecessary medications, you know, these are all the things that uh, can affect uh, gut health. Okay. All right. So what are the signs that we don't have good gut health? What do we need to be aware of? So like, you know, any organ that has symptoms, even poor gut health can lead to uh, symptoms. It can be mild, like you can feel a little queasy in the stomach or you may feel nauseous or, you know, after you eat something, you feel something not sitting right in the stomach. Those are all like the early signs of uh, uh, early symptoms of uh, poor gut health. You can also have change in the bowel habits, you know, having regular bowel movements is a, um, you know, sign of uh, uh, good, uh, healthy gut. And uh, if you're not having regular bowel movements, if you're having diarrhea or constipation, if you feel gassy, bloated, you know, those are all some of the symptoms uh, for a, a poor, poor gut, not well-functioning gut. All right, so we know that when we eat something that's not really good for us and we don't feel so good, all right, so that makes sense. But how would we know if it's something more serious than just eating something that we that didn't agree with us? So that's a very good question and it's important to uh, recognize, uh, you know, when to seek medical attention, when to see the doctor, right? So if you have mild symptoms that last for two or three days and then uh, you know, your stomach and your gut, you know, get back to normal, then that's good. We know that, okay, maybe something that you have eaten, you know, has caused these symptoms. But if these symptoms that I just mentioned are ongoing for two weeks or even more than that, and they are getting worse, then you know that something is not right. Something has happened in your um, in your gut. And that's when you really need to talk to your doctor and get some advice. Okay, and so we're gonna be talking about that, going to the doctor, we're gonna talk about some other things as well. After the break, we're gonna talk about probiotics and fiber and where we really get that and what's really the good stuff and what's the stuff that we should just leave on the shelf. We're gonna be talking about that coming up next. Dr. Ro Rohini Venga with Alamance Gastroenterology is talking about your gut health. And in case you missed it in the first one, why is gut health so important for like your entire body, not just your tummy? 
So uh, it's very important to know that having a healthy gut has so many important functions for your entire um, well-being, such as uh, maintaining the immune system that help to protect against fight against harmful pathogens. It also improves and promotes intestinal barrier and uh, it uh, thereby reducing invasion of uh, harmful pathogens. It also keeps ball movements regular as well as um, even mental health being. It's very important, you know, that you have healthy gut in order to have mental well-being. So these are very important, um, you know, functions of a healthy gut. All right, so we wanted to reiterate that so you would then pay attention to what you need to do for that healthy gut. All right, let's talk about probiotics. What are they? So probiotics are in, you know, simple terminology, they are uh, basically beneficial bacteria or good bacteria. They are live microorganisms, which are just bacteria and uh, they maintain the integrity of the gut microbiome. And, you know, the probiotics, they are basically, you know, you can get in the form of, um, you know, foods and you can also get in the form of supplements. All right, so if you're thinking to yourself at home, I don't have any gut issues. Do I need to take probiotics or include probiotic enhanced foods in my diet? Very good question. So you don't necessarily have to supplement with probiotics. Like I said, you know, probiotics are naturally uh, available in, uh, you know, when you're maintaining a healthy balanced diet and also in natural fermented products such as yogurt, which generally you have it every day as part of your uh, balanced meal and uh, kefir, uh, sauerkraut and also kombucha. You don't necessarily need to have all of these. You can have either one of these daily that really helps to maintain that balance between the good and bad bacteria uh, in your digestive system. All right, so find whichever one you like and stick with that and use that as your probiotic. How long does it take before you know if a probiotic is helping? It's, it depends on, uh, you know, what you're using the probiotic for, you know. For example, if you have uh, antibiotic associated diarrhea, you know, which is, which is the common side effect when you take antibiotics, you know, the recommendation is that you could take probiotic that helps to reduce the symptoms of diarrhea. And you don't necessarily have to take probiotic uh, for a long time. You can take for one or two weeks after you finish the course of antibiotic, and it helps to restore uh, the gut microbiome back to its, you know, normal state. Uh, for some individuals it may take few days for some it may take few weeks um, or even several weeks it depends on what you're using the probiotic for okay so we talked about probiotics what about fiber how much fiber should we be trying to consume daily we we actually underestimate the amount of fiber that we have to consume uh, on a daily basis we have to consume at least 25 to 40 grams of fiber and uh, you know, it's very important part of our day-to-day, -day, um, you know, meal plan. And uh, the fiber is in um, soluble fiber or insoluble fiber. Most of the fiber that is available um, in our foods, uh, like fruits, vegetables, nuts, legumes, it's an insoluble fiber. And there are fiber supplements um, which are over the shelf and they are mostly the soluble fiber. So again, if we're doing that balanced with fruits and legumes and things of that nature, then we're getting probably the fiber that we need. But if we're not doing that and we need to increase our fiber intake, we need to do that kind of slowly. Say that again. Do we need to do it slowly if we need to like increase our fiber? So um, yes, it's very important because, you know, some um, individuals we have seen, some patients, they come, you know, they may have some sensitive gut. So you need to uh, slowly add fiber and see what, how much you tolerate and depends on your body composition as well, mm -hmm. you know, depends on your um, BMI and depends on your physical activity, uh, the amount of fiber that you consume. and. Uh, you, you can add on average for each meal, um, 
you know, about uh, five to 10 grams of fiber. Okay, um, so we've got about a minute left. If you're concerned, if folks at home are concerned about their health, their gut health, at what point should they see a gastroenterologist? So when you have any of these, uh, the symptoms such as, you know, not having bowel movements regularly, if you're having abdominal pain, severe abdominal bloating, uh, you have to talk to your primary care provider first and then get a referral to the gastroenterologist after you know being evaluated for these symptoms and sometimes you may end up needing uh, endoscopy or a colonoscopy depending on the severity of symptoms. Okay, but start with your primary caregiver first. All right, we're gonna uh, give you a recap of all of this in the interview in the To Your Wellbeing section. That's on WFMYNews2.com.